Amen. Another beautiful Easter Sunday here at Hoper Hill Baptist Church. Before we go any further, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I want to thank you for bringing us together this morning. Thank you for Easter, for what it means to me. Thank you for Jesus most of all. Forgive me for my sins, dear Lord. Forgive me for where I failed you. Cleanse me of unrighteousness. Please be with these objects of prayer that have been mentioned this morning. Be with the rest of our service today, dear Lord. Be with the choir as they sing. Be with Brother Hunter as he preaches the message. Help us to take it and apply it to our lives. Please help us to go out and spread your gospel to those around us. Thank you for Jesus most of all, and it's in his name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, got a few announcements this morning. First off, happy Easter. Good to see everybody on this beautiful Easter morning. There will be no evening services tonight. <clears throat> Remember that. Tomorrow night will be men's Bible study beginning at 7 p.m. I'd like to invite all the men who would like to come to come out to it. We're going through the book of John. What chapter are we in? Yeah. John, we're in the book of John. Come on out. We'll figure it out. Wednesday night, there will be a, a, a service at Morning Star Assisted Living. There'll be one out there to sing at 630. Is there any other announcements? The lock-in is scheduled for May the 6th and 7th. Lock-in is scheduled for May the 6th and 7th. Anybody who feels led to stay all night. <laughs> she she said please help <laughs> all right any other announcements grant i've got one the, the folks that showed interest last week in uh possibly going out for the training for the baptist men disaster relief if you'd see me after service i've got a paper i'd like to pass on to you okay see rob if you're interested in the men's baptist release anything else Thanks to everybody that helped yesterday. Anything else? If not, we'll continue with our service. Good morning. Let's worship our Lord and Savior this morning. We're going to sing hymn number 140, Down at the Cross, all four verses. <coughs>
hymn number 160, Love in the Grave He Lay, all three verses.
Number five. Oh, hold on one, Bill. Oh, yeah. I ain't no Isn't the Lord good? 
Whew. I think Bill said that because he wanted to see me cry. I tell you what, son, that song gets me every single time. I don't know why. Well, I tell you what, after singing like that, and after breakfast like we had, this better be really good or really short. Because I don't know what I can do. My goodness. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We have a living Savior. Jesus is alive. And He is still living today. If you have a copy of your Bible this morning, I encourage you to turn with me to the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Luke 24. <clears throat> this morning we're going to be spending some time with a couple of boys. A man by the name of Cleopas and his friend. Luke 24, Cleopas and his pal are just walking down a road heading to Emmaus. They're on their way. And as they're on their way going down, they're talking to each other. Did you hear about the news of the resurrection? Did you hear about the news that folks went to the grave and it was open? Did you hear the news that even folks went to the tomb, went inside, and when they got in there, there was nothing but some tattered cloths and some grave clothes? Did you hear the news? But to them, it was just news. They said, well, it's just news. We've heard about it. And they're sitting there walking on the Emmaus Road, having a good conversation between each other. And all of a sudden, there comes a pilgrim walking beside them. A stranger to them. Comes up and he hears the chatter. He hears the buzz. He hears the news. And he says, uh, what you talking about? That's the redneck rendition. What you talking about? And uh, Cleopas says, pilgrim, are you serious? Are you the only person around here who has not heard about what's going on? And the fellow says, well, what's been going on? And Cleopas unloads. Don't you mean to tell me you have not heard about Jesus of Nazareth? Don't you mean to tell me the one who was a prophet? Oh, there's a mistake. Don't you mean to tell me you didn't hear about the one we thought was going to be the Redeemer of Israel? He had a small view. Don't you believe and haven't you heard about everything that's going around about this Jesus who's supposed to die and save Israel? And it was that moment that pilgrim has been waiting for. He says, oh, you of little faith. Oh, you foolish ones. <coughs> And it was at that moment in time he then turned and gave Cleopas an earful. And the Bible tells us he even opened the scriptures up and began to just pour into them and tell them about how the Christ had to suffer, telling in Old Testament prophecies, sharing that good old news about how the Savior is going to die, how he's going to come again. He just had the opportunity to unload in Cleopas' ear. And Cleopas didn't know what to say. And it was at that time, it was about night time, and it was time to kick back and take a break and rest. And that's where we find ourselves this morning. These old boys have been spending some time walking on the road with a pilgrim, hearing about the suffering servant of a man named Jesus, but they had no idea. This morning I want to preach on the subject, Realizations from a Face to Face with Jesus. Folks, I don't know about you, but I've had a face to face with the Spirit of God this morning. Amen. But this morning, realizations from a face to face with Jesus. Luke 24, beginning in verse number 28. Luke 24, beginning in verse number 28. The Bible says, Then they drew near to the village where they were going. And he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, literally held him back, saying, Abide with us, stay with us, for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Verse number 30, now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him. And he vanished from their eyes, literally gone. 
And they spoke to one another, said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, you are good. And it's because you love me that you died. Jesus, you came and you took the punishment of my sin, paid the payment that I could never pay. And Father, all I could ever say is thank you for that gift. Thank you for your son and how a moment with him makes us realize so much. We love you. Be with every soul in this place. Set me loose. Give me clarity of thought. I love you. And it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Realizations from a face-to-face with Jesus. I don't know about you, but whenever I got saved, I realized a few things. I realized a few things this morning. I realized a few things at breakfast. I realized a few things at sunrise. I realized a lot today. But today I want us all to realize something of just a face-to-face with Jesus. Cleopas and his friend are just walking on the road in the dark on a blind way, on a blind road, just looking for a home. And they come face to face with Jesus. And it was in that they realized something. They come to the place, and it's when it's that resurrected Jesus that they begin to realize. And the first thing that they realized is this. All my note takers, there's four points, and this is number one. They realized, first of all, that Jesus is alive. I don't know about you, but I'm just going to be simple this morning. I'm going to be easy and clear. Jesus is alive. They realize that. They realize that it says there in verse number, (coughs) excuse me, verse number 31, then their eyes were opened. Now I always look at that and I say, what was holding them back? Why didn't they realize it? But you come to realize the ones doing the constraining of Jesus were actually the ones constrained. They wanted to hold him up and keep talking with him, but in reality, they were the ones who didn't have the clear view. You see, the reality of it is they were just too busy thinking over what they had heard the whole time rather than simply enjoying the company. They were walking with Jesus and they had no idea he was there. They were walking with him on a road and they had no idea who he was. All they were was just trying to tell him about Jesus and he said, open your eyes, it's me. Folks, a face-to-face encounter with Jesus makes you realize He is alive. Jesus is alive. They realize that Jesus is alive. It was in that moment their eyes were opened. It was, oh my word, it's Him. It's really Him. And they realized something else. (coughs) Not only did they realize that Jesus is alive and their eyes were open, but they realized Jesus is. Whenever they seen that he was alive and they said, it's, he's alive, it's Jesus. Jesus is. Jesus is not a was, he's not a has been, he's not a never will be, he's an is. I thought I'd get a better amen on that one. Jesus is. I'm glad to know I have a Savior who's not a has been. I'm glad to know that I have a Savior who didn't live a good life, who went to Calvary, took the punishment, died on the grave, died on Calvary, went to the tomb, and stayed there. He is. It was when they realized that Jesus is alive, they realized that He is. He's the same Jesus after death as He was before. Nothing had changed. He hadn't turned into something else. He wasn't something new. Jesus is Jesus. Do you know that when you pray right now in heaven, there's an intercessor between us and the Father? Jesus sits there listening to our prayers and saying, Father, there with me. He is. He's not was in heaven. He's not will be in heaven. He is in heaven. 
He's there interceding for me and you. He is. He's not just alive. He is alive. Jesus is in heaven interceding. He is the Lord. He is. Jesus is. You realize so much when you realize He's alive. It's not as if He became a different Jesus when He died and all of a sudden He's a new Jesus. He's not Jesus 2.0. He was Jesus 7.0 the whole time. Perfect, perfect, and perfect. Jesus is. He is. He's the same then, the same now, and the same forever. He is. Jesus is. But I love in verse number 31 that little phrase, and they knew him. When they realized that Jesus is alive, it wasn't just that their eyes were open and they saw him as alive, seeing that Jesus is. They realized that with him alive is the fact that he is the resurrection. They knew him. The word knew literally means recognized. They, at that moment, the shades were gone. The fog was cleared. Everything was out of the way. And they said, my word, that is Jesus. And they knew him at that moment. They recognized him. They immediately grasped him. They said, he's alive. It is really him. He's right there. But they realized that the resurrection is not a place, it's not a position, it's not a privilege, it's not a present. The resurrection is a person. And they said, right there it is. They're staring at Jesus alive and well. Jesus is alive and they said, there's the resurrection. The resurrection is not a benefit. It's not something I am. It's not something we'll... He is the resurrection. Jesus is the resurrection. It's not some wonderful place. It's not a wonderful position. The resurrection is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And He is alive. Jesus is alive. You see, you realize that when you come face to face with Jesus. You can't say, well... I know what I'm reading here, but I disagree with it. That there was a ghost. No, it said he ate. Well, I disagree with that. He never died. No, folks, he died. When you come face to face with the Word of God found in the Scriptures and you come face to face with the Jesus bound within these pages, guess what? Jesus is alive. I told you I'm going to be simple. Jesus is alive. They realize that he's alive. But notice what else in the text, and that was point number one. I'll go to point number two now if you don't mind. Not only did they realize that Jesus is alive in a face-to-face, but they realized that it is real. They realized that it is real. If he really is standing there and it is right there in front of them, guess what? It is real. But the text shows us that not only is it real, it is real for everyone. They said in verse number 32, they said to one another. Just a moment ago, we got done singing because he loved me. I started boo-hooing. Your preacher's a crier. I did. I started crying. (laughs) Sit. He started crying. I mean, I was just whining and crying. I couldn't hold it back. And all of a sudden, I look up and Bill Hyatt's sitting there pointing back at me saying, There you go, preacher. It was real all of a sudden for more than one. And then I look around and I see hands up and I see tears flowing and I'm seeing this going on. It was real for everyone. You couldn't have hit it. You couldn't have put a cloak on it. There wasn't enough water to put out that flame. It was real for everyone. That's what they did. They said to one another. It was as if they're, pinch me. Make sure I'm awake. Pinch me. All right, I'm still here. It's still, it's real. It's real. That sweet spirit that comes in, it's real. You can't deny that. When they're sitting there, one another, talking to each other, saying, did you just see Jesus? Did you just witness that? It was real for me. It was real for me. It's real for everyone. No one can deny that. It is real for everyone. Jesus is alive to everyone. But in verse number 32, it's not just alive for everyone. It's alive to everyone because it is real for you. It is real for you. 
In verse number 32, he said, Did not our heart burn within us? I have a pretty good feeling there's not enough antacid and plopping fizz to cure that heartburn. You can plop and fizz for two days and chew on a pack of Tums and it ain't going to get rid of that heartburn. He said, our heart burned within us. It was right there. Nothing cured it except when they realized that who he really was. It was not a need for any type of antacid to cure the heartburn, just a cleared view. When the fog left and when the fog leaves your eyes, and you truly see Jesus for who He is, and you say, right there is the risen Lord. That's Him. And it's real for you. No one can take away your testimony. No one can tarnish it. You say, I have personally given my life to Christ. You've never seen Him. Don't have to. He's right there. He is alive in glory. He is alive, and it's real. It's real for everyone. It's real for you. But why is it real for you, and why is it real for everyone? Because it's really Him. It says there in verse number uh, 32, it says, And did not our heart burn within us while He talked with us on the road, and while He opened the Scriptures? It's really Jesus who is alive, spoke, broke, touched, opened, sent, and arose. It was Him. It is really Him. There's not some fake Jesus. It's Him. It's the real Jesus. The one born in Nazareth. The one born of a virgin. The one crucified. The one in the tomb. The one resurrected. It is really Him. That's Him. And it's really Him. And it's real. There is no fake Jesus. There is but one Jesus. And the real Him is alive and well today. It is is real. Jesus is alive. It is real. It is real. It is real. It is real. You can never deny it. You can never take it away. You can never burden it down. The fact of the matter is flat out truth. There is but one Jesus and He is the living Savior and He is real. And He is alive. He is living today, ascended on glory, higher than the heavens, ascending for me and you. He is the masterpiece, the centerpiece, and the glory of all heaven. All glory in heaven is pointed at Jesus. All glory of creation is pointed at Jesus. He is real, and He is alive. Point number two. Point number three, and we're going to camp. You ought to camp. I ain't got nothing but time. You? Amen. I got a ham that takes two hours to cook. It takes forever to heat that bad boy up. I'm just living on bar time right now. A face to face with Jesus, you realize that Jesus is alive. A face to face with Jesus, Cleopas and his buddy realize it's real. He was sitting right there. But then they notice that urgency is needed. They realize that urgency is needed. In verse number 33, it says, So they rose up that very hour. They got up that very hour. They realized just how important this is, how urgent this really is, and how necessary this is. They realized it. And they, when they realized that at that moment urgency was re- needed, and they realized it is needed Now, so they rose up that very hour. The good news is bad news when it's late news. I'm going to say that again. The good news is bad news when it's late news. There was a a man who had a very beloved loved one who come down stricken with cancer, plagued with it completely, burdened with it, and the physician was his friend, and he said, I'm going to find the cure. He absolutely spent day in, day out, night after night, day after day, sleepless days trying to find a cure for cancer. He hit the jackpot and discovered the cure, figured it out. He had spent so much time working on this cure that he became so tired and so weary, he said, I've got to rest. I'm going to rest a couple days and then I'll go find my friend. He laid down, rested, 
and in a few days he went to be with his friend. And as he showed up, he put his hands on the side of the bed and said, Friend, I found the cure. No response. He grabbed hold of the side and he said, Friend, I found the cure. No response. And the gentleman at the head of the bed said, Sir, please remove your fingers so the casket door doesn't pinch them. The good news is bad news if it's late news. That man was just a few days late. Now that's just a story. Just a figurative story. You see, they got up that very hour. Folks, let me be blunt, flat out clear. People do not need the gospel tomorrow. People do not need to hear about the resurrected Jesus in a couple days. People need to hear about the resurrected Lord Jesus right now. They don't need it in a day or two. They don't need it next week. They need to see Him now. They need a glimpse of Him. They need to see Him in the Word of God. They need to go and find the picture of Him and say, right there He is. It's Word picture. If you can't see Jesus looking at the Bible, I don't know what you see. They need it now. They needed to hear it now. They rose up that very hour. I don't know about you, but right now it'd be hard to get this whole crowd up and moving in a moment. We're still fuller than a tick. We're still wore out and tired. But let me tell you something. When you get a glimpse of who Jesus is, it don't matter what condition you're in. You'll get up at that moment. I don't care when, where, why, or how. And you'll go tell somebody about Jesus. They realized who he was. They realized that Jesus is alive. They realized that it is real. They realized that urgency is needed. It's needed right now. But more importantly, needed whenever now is. Look at verse number 29 with me. In verse number 29 it says, But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. For it's toward evening. And the day is far spent, and he went in to stay with them. The resurrection of Jesus Christ needs no refrigeration, it needs no canning, and it needs no storage. It never goes bad. You see, let me go back to just a moment ago. You remember the story about the man holding on to the side of his friend's bed and saying, Hi, buddy, I found the cure for cancer. <clears throat> and the man saying, Sir, it's too late. But what you don't realize is that the man laying in the bed who is now about to have his going home service had already been sharing with the pallbearer beforehand as he come in to prepare everything with the physicians there at the hospital about the great physician that he knew. He could care less what happened to cancer because he knew where he was going after. He shared the news that never goes bad. And the man there said, there's one note that was left for you. He said, that gentleman laying in that casket right there knew you were coming. He knew you were going to be here a little late. But he wanted to tell you something about a message that never goes bad. About a message that never goes away and about news that's never bad news. Jesus is alive. He shared the gospel with a man. That man was saved. Everybody there was saved. Glory, amen, hallelujah. Let's go to the house. I'm just kidding. I'm still going. You see, urgency is needed whenever now is. It was in the middle of the night. It was dark. It doesn't need to wait. It doesn't need to go anywhere. It's good whenever you go. It is good whenever and wherever it goes. It never expires. And whenever now is, is the right time to tell somebody about Jesus. I don't care where you are. Don't care when you are. Don't care who you are. Everybody needs to know about Jesus. Urgency is needed. They grasped it and they seen that. They rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. But when they got there, point number four for all my note takers, they realized what was important. When you realize who Jesus is, when you realize that He is alive, when you realize that it is real, when you realize that urgency is needed, you realize what is important. What did they realize? 
In verse number 33, we see they realized not what they had done was important, but who they had met. They returned to Jerusalem, found the eleven and those where they were gathered, and said... Now I want you to think if you were in my shoes, excuse me, if you were in their shoes, I'll just be the blunt of the joke here. If I was in their shoes, oh, what I could have said. Now let's think about something, church. Emmaus was seven miles from Jerusalem and it says they went all the way. If you put me in Cleopas' shoes, I would have got there and I could have said very well, I walked seven miles to tell you about this. Would you have done the same? Don't be sitting here high haughty. I would have never. They could have said, we walked seven miles at night to tell you this. If you ever see me walk seven miles, go with me. Because it's either really bad where I'm coming from or really good where I'm going. They could have said, I walked seven miles in the middle of the night to tell you this. They could have said so much. But instead, they had one thing to say. They can only say one thing. The Lord is risen indeed. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. I know what you've been through because I've been through it too. Get a ticket and get in line. But guess what? We've got a Savior who's alive. He is risen indeed. That's all you need. It's not important what I've been through. My testimony looks like a rap sheet. Who cares? He's alive. The Lord is risen indeed. I don't need anything. The Lord is alive. They realized what was important is who they met, not what they had done. Who cares what they've been through? They could have said seven miles that night just to tell you. But they said, no, he is risen indeed. They realized what was important. And it was who they had met. They realized that not only what is important is that who they had met, but more importantly, they began to say it was not that important what Jesus had done, but how he was. Excuse me. How he is. They could have talked back and they had been thinking through the story the whole time. They had been going over it. Well, they said he was dead and they said he was alive and they said he was a resurrection. They were talking through the crucifixion and the trial and the burial ceremony. But after they had realized of how Jesus was, they didn't care what he had did. They only cared about how he was. It's not about, man, Jesus did this, Jesus did that. No, he is. Yes, he went to Calvary. Thank God for Calvary, but he's alive. He is alive. It is because of the resurrection we can rejoice and say we have a risen Savior. They weren't rejoicing in what he had done. They were rejoicing in how he is. He is alive. He is there. They were rejoicing in that, and they realized it was more important to realize that Jesus is not dead than to think about everything that had gone on. <clears throat> but lastly, they realized what was most important, not what they had thought, but what had happened. When they stopped and they began to think about it, and they were going over it all in verse number 35, and they told these things that had happened on the road and how he was known, literally revealed to them in the breaking of bread. It was through the breaking of bread that Jesus was fully revealed and their eyes were opened. It clicked. And they realized at that moment, Jesus is alive. Jesus is so alive, he's eating. You know how alive you got to be to eat? You got to be all the way alive. Now, I watched a bunch of half dead Baptists show up this morning, but after a little bit, they woke up. I love you enough to tell you. I can say, hey, you can see it, them foggy eyes, and you, we're here. I'm like, yeah, you'll be here in a minute. I promise you will. You see, they realize that Jesus is so alive that he is eating. It was through the breaking of bread. It's not what they had thought happened, but really did happen. But above all else, they were realizing nothing's changed. There has been nothing changed. Jesus has not changed a bit. He's still breaking bread. 
He is still the broken bread. He is still the poured out offering. He is still the servant to all of us. Jesus is the exact same as he always has been. They didn't come to a place and say, man, we met a new Jesus and he's great. They said, no, we sat down and eat with Jesus. It's really him. Folks, Jesus is Jesus. There is no difference in him. There is no change in him. He is not special today and different that day. He is the exact same Jesus all the time. Jesus is Jesus. You see, they realized that it was more important of what had truly happened in front of them than what they had thought. They could have shared so much. Man, we were trying to think it through, figure out the crucifixion and the penal substitutionary death, but rather, He's right there. It's more important to realize what happened than try to figure it out. They realized it was more important for them to realize that not only was He right there, but He is really there. And not only realize about what they had done, but who they had met. They realized Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He is alive and it is real. Urgency is needed. And when they saw Jesus, they realized what was important. So you're asking me, preacher, how do I, what do I take away from this? Like I said, when you follow up singing like that in a meal like we had this morning, it better be simple and sweet or it better be great. So I'm going simple and sweet. Option A. You want to know what you need to take away from this message, from this resurrection day, from the breakfast, from the fellowship, from the music and everything this morning? And it is this. Simple, sweet, and clear. Jesus is. Period. I don't care what you put after that, but the most important thing you know today is Jesus is. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is Redeemer. Jesus is shepherd who leads us into green pastures, who guides us through the valley of the shadow of death and we will fear no evil. I can't do that on my own, but I can do it with Jesus. He's the shepherd. He's our Lord. He's the Savior. He's the Redeemer. He's the resurrection. Jesus is. This morning, I pray for every one of you that above all else, you become captivated with Jesus. Who cares about anything else? Jesus is. Would you pray with me? Father, on this resurrection day, as we prepare to leave this place and spend time with family and friends and just good times together and eat and rejoice and fellowship, Lord, let us never lose a captivated mind upon you. Jesus, you are. You are in heaven. You are our intercessor. You are our Lord. You are our Savior, our Redeemer, our Shepherd. Jesus, you are everything. We love you, Lord, and be with every heart in this place. If there is a person in here today who does not know you, who has never given their life to you, who has never put their faith in you as Savior and Lord, Lord, this altar is open and let them do that today if you so pull them this way and lead them. Father, if there's a person in this place today who is who is in a, in a bad way, Lord, and their heart's troubled, and they say, I don't know where I am. I'm so confused. Lord, draw them into you. Settle them in. And let their eyes be focused on you. Father, be with every heart in this place. If one be troubled or lost, let them be here. If Lord, if they feel led to come here and be here, let them come, Lord. Father, and we're going to give you the glory for it all. Be with every heart in this place. And it is in Christ's precious, perfect, and absolutely wonderful name we pray. Amen.